Welcome back to Bespoke Edit. I've spent a couple of hours and I've, I've dismantled the bag extensively and I've pulled out, just used um, yeah, just uh, a couple of simple tools, uh, you know, what's this thing called? An awl and some tweezers just to sort of flick out all of the stitching. That, that takes a lot of time. There's still a little bit in here. Um, you just have to flick each stitch. You can't, you can't work properly over old stitching you have to spend the time flick them all out and just just pull it away so that you can actually see the holes and you know i want to be working back through the original holes in these skins and i need to be able to see the holes so you see quite you know it's a very fiddly job <sighs> there we go we can we've got nice nice clean holes they're a bit dirty but that will clean up no problem at all but anyway the, the, the handle itself, it looks complete and it looks salvageable, but the skins are a bit rotten. And given the amount of use I'm going to give this bag, this skin won't last six months. It will just disintegrate. Even if I do what I said I was going to do, dismantle the bag, line it with chamois leather and put it all back together again. The chamois will survive, the, the crocodile skins will definitely separate and sort of, it will rub away, it's just not very, it's, the reason it's quite rotten, the palm of the hand obviously it holds the, holds the case and as perspiration gets into the, into the crocodile skin and the salts and the perspiration over years, it just degrades the skin, it makes it slightly rotten even though it looks nice. So I'm actually going to make a complete replica, I'm going to go through my skins Actually, looking at what I've got here, with the with the with the the body of the bag and the handle, it's not the best match, and that's the original handle. I've probably got skin that will do a better match, and I'll do an absolute replica. Now, this has had a lot of work before. Um, if you saw the previous films, you'd have seen me saying I thought it was rather unusual that crocodile skin was directly onto the onto the steel work onto the metal work and it you know it's it's likely to fail and I was surprised it had not failed now what I hadn't noticed is somebody's been here before somebody's actually somebody's actually been in let's open this up um there we go you can see there's a, a little patch a little patch inside here let's give the camera a chance to focus and um so somebody had opened this up, or maybe not, just maybe just open the edges and push this. This is like it's like belt. I think that's off a belt or something similar. Push that in, and then glued the crocodile skin over it. And then there's a tiniest little row of stitches just here. They're machine stitches. They're not. They're not these big sort of cream stitches that were original. So it's clearly failed here, and it's exactly the same there. And there are bits of the crocodile are dropping off. It, you know, it looks fine, but it won't survive. So I'm going to make a complete replica. Realistically, I'll probably keep these because they are quite a nice match. But they're a bit fragile. So I'll take them off and I will completely back them with, with chamois leather. And I'll use a little bit of a, a slightly stronger leather just, just here where it folds. And I'll probably use um, upholstery leather. Because it's quite, it's quite thin. I don't want to be using belt leather and try and bend it round. I think upholstery plus the chamois, and that will be hidden. And you know that. So the chamois leather will strengthen this, and then the, the upholstery leather will give it a little bit more. But with the handle, I'll almost definitely use a, a, an old belt, quite thick, probably two point five three millimeter thick, and then cut new skins, new crocodile skin, stitch it on. They have like a, a piece of rope look inside and it's the rope that gives that that rounded shape so um I'll, I'll make a separate video when i'm you know it would take take some time to um to make a new handle and i'll show you every every step these are the uh, these are the straps once again the skins it's a bit fragile but it's all there and it does have its original lining so i'll undo the stitching Peel that lining off. I'll put chamois leather, very thin chamois leather, glue it on. So the whole thing is held by the chamois. And then put the original lining back on and restitch. 
and then restitch this directly. Where does it go? Here, I think. Yeah. And um, so you never know the chamois was there. There is another one of those, and it's in worse condition. Where is it? Here it is. Look, it looks absolutely horrendous. It's all falling apart, but carefully fished apart, pushed back together, because we haven't lost any skin. Carefully pushed apart, pushed back together, and go through the same thing with the chamois leather. And yeah, it looks terrible, but I could easily replace those. But this does match, and I don't, you know, it doesn't take any particular abuse. It's, it should be okay, should be okay. If I, if, I, if I repair it with a chamois and it still seems a bit fragile, maybe I will look for some donor skin and make new ones. Um, what else we got here? The buckles. They're in very good condition, but, you know, it's likely to fail here in the future. And given how much I'll be using them, I'll be opening and closing these buckles, it's very likely to break across there. So I will take the buckle out. I've undone all these stitches. I'll remove the buckle. Same thing. Use, use very fine chamois leather. When I call it chamois leather, it's the type of leather that you use for washing a car, that very thin yellow stuff. And it's, it's very strong and it's quite cheap. So glue it on and then trim around with a knife. Trim all these with a knife. I'll lay it down. I'll use the, um, the awl and I'll go through, stab all the holes in the chamois leather and then um, put it all back together. You know, re-stitch re with the chamois nice and hidden. I'll even put chamois leather on the back of this. This is just like a toggle that it catches the other side of the strap, you know, but clearly it will get a lot of use and it's likely to break. But it won't break if it's got chamois leather on there. Let's just push these out of the way. What else have we got? Um, yeah, this is, this is part of the lining. It's lost a tiny bit of skin across the edge here. Um, but it's, it's a bit stretchy to be honest with you, so I think I'll be able to stretch it a couple of millimetres. That just hides this piece of steel which goes underneath the handle area. It stops the top of the bag crowning, um, but that's perfectly serviceable. Work through all the original holes. This is the original liner, desperately needs cleaning. I'll clean it with acetone, not acetone, alcohol, clean all this paint off and moisturise it. Uh, well, let's, let's have a look. Now, this is the main, that, that, that's the, the top of the bag and it, it gets a lot of folding. And it has had various repairs before, which I talked about in other videos. And somebody had done a repair across the back here, put a very stiff piece of leather, which I've peeled off. That was here. And that was glued on and stitched on. And it, I wonder why. Firstly, they've gone straight through the dress skins with the stitching, but that will sort of, now that I've picked the stitching out, when I clean that and recolour it and moisturise and buff it, that will become pretty well hidden. But there's no actual damage to these areas. I'm wondering what they were trying to hold together. And where it's been stitched, it's because there's been a piece of leather holding that, it's caused it to flex more here and it's starting to break there. But that's been caused by this ancient repair that was probably done in the 50s or the 60s. Um, I'm not sure about that, you know, so I'm not going to be putting that repair back. What I am going to be doing is completely lining the whole bag. You know, I'll clean it, get all the glue off. And I was going to line it with chamois leather, but I'll probably line it with a poultry leather, a big piece of poultry leather. Press it all down where it's frail. You know, that's definitely going to break. But if I put the poultry leather over, and then these here as well, um, I pulled one off. That was just, just here. And once again, they've been, there's, a, there's a small bit of damage here. And this is very thick and very clumsy. And when that's on, that was, that was applied probably in the 60s, I don't know. It was glued on and then it was stitched through. But it keeps that area very stiff. It only causes it to flex elsewhere. It puts extra stress elsewhere. So I'm going to peel all of these off. Try and dress away all the old stitching. I should be able to buff it out. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. I should be able to buff it all out. Um, big job. Big job. But so long as I can stabilise this. Look, we've got a tear coming here. But I'll be using the upholstery leather. 
and it look, you know, so we'll be stitching through it, it'll all be held. If any of these scales in the future do start to lift, because we'll have upholstery leather all the way through, I will be able to fish, you know, on a, on a screwdriver or a chopstick, I'll be able to get some glue and push it under the scale and glue the scale back down if you've got something to stick to. Whereas this has got nothing to stick to because it's not lined. But um, yeah, we'll be okay with this. We'll be okay. Look, it's quite, it's quite bad here. Quite bad. But I'll press it down. Stabilise the whole thing with a lining leather. Almost definitely. I'd, chamois leather would work fine. But in this instance, I think it would work slightly better with upholstery, upholstery skin. Some quite fine upholstery skin. And then when that's stable from behind, anything that starts to lift very slightly when the bag's almost complete i can just push a little bit of adhesive in in here you just push it into the gaps and lie it down flat and if they lift in the future which they almost definitely will crocodile skin does lift i can just do the same again because i will have something to to glue to basically so but it's all there i'm really pleased and then there's just one final piece which is in lovely condition this is the main front of the bag. The flap comes over here. We have the uh, the buckles uh, stitched on here, but I haven't found any damage or cracks to this skin. But nonetheless, I'm still going to line it with the with the uh, upholstery fabric because this is going to get a lot of use. It's at least a hundred years old. It actually, it's starting to crack a little bit there. So if I've got a skin on the back of it. You know, once again, if or when that does get worse, I'll be able to fish some, fish some adhesive behind the scales and glue it down. Because if I don't line it now, I'll be faffing about putting patches on the inside and cutting the stitching to put patches in after I'm using the bag. And I don't want that. But it really is superb. It's a lot of work and I'll do lots and lots of videos sort of showing you exactly where we go. And, um, you know, it's a bit curled up. But when we put the upholstery fabric on the back here, yeah, the skin will lie flat. The adhesive will soften this skin and all these wrinkles. It will just lie flat. And, you know, where it's... Yeah, this bottom here was curled over. That's through use, quite frankly. When the bag's full and it's heavy and it's dropped down, it's dropped on this edge. And when it, you know, and it's curled it up. But, you know, by, by backing it with a fine skin folding it over, you know, with the, with the adhesive. The adhesive will hold it straight and a, re, a new set of stitching. It'll take its shape on. And this is just going to be wonderful. Most of it's going to be re-salvaged. This is the edge. It goes, goes all the way around here. There's no point in trying to use crocodile skins as an edging, quite frankly. Well, some really expensive bags do, but they're frail, they're fragile, because crocodile skin, this takes a lot of bashing and beating. It's, you know, the bag gets pulled, it concertinas slightly. And it, quite frankly, crocodile skin, very unlikely to survive. Uh, it would just crack and fall apart. So I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to reuse this. It does need a few patches. I'll just patch it from behind the corners and so on. And I'll reuse the original slightly frail skin, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. There's no, there's no point. Is that red rot? That might be red rot. Well, red rot is a bit of a problem. If I, if I decide that's red rot, then I will change this skin. Um, you know, I'll change it for new skin, but I'll have a better look at that. We'll see, we'll see. With red rot, you can tell when you try to put the, the coloured moisturiser on, it just, just rubs away, the, the surface rubs away, it doesn't take on the skin. So if I decide that is red rot, I'll, I will change this for a soft, floppy skin, but definitely not crocodile, because with the constant concertina in, the crocodile, it just falls apart like a jigsaw. Doesn't matter on the quality of the skin, even the best quality of skin will, when it's constantly, constantly wriggled about and constantined. And bear in mind, because the area is quite small, you can't use huge skins because you're expecting it to, you're expecting it to flex. And big scales, big tough scales that won't fall apart, don't concertina. So to get it to concertina, you'd have to use very small scales from smaller skins or from the more fragile, you know, like, like that, for instance, the big thick scales, if you were to try and use that as edging, look how stiff it is. It wouldn't, it just wouldn't concertina. It would survive the punishment, but it wouldn't serve its purpose. So yeah, you need a smaller, 
more fragile skin with little tiny scales that generally from a juvenile creature or from more you know just from the, the tend to the small scales tend to come from the inside of the legs you know, inside the leg area here they tend to be smaller but just more fragile and they just wouldn't survive along the edges so we'll see I'll, I'll investigate this piece i'm hoping to reuse it but on camera i've just noticed it's possible that's red rot but if it is i won't reuse it if it's not i will I'll repair it but anyway let me stop this video because it's starting to get quite long and um, but I'll definitely do various videos showing this but I think we're going to start with the handle and that will probably take a few videos to you know we'll be cutting it out I'll, it's quite a, it's quite a challenge it, it's not a quick process so it will definitely take a couple of videos just to do the handle